This is the first session for DB2 in the second week, and I have the great pleasure of introducing Michael Berlechki from the IBM DB2 ZOS development SWAT team, as you can see on the foil, <laughs> um, with something that uh, I think will appeal to all of us in DB2, which is ZOS housekeeping best practices. Um, and I bet Michael's got plenty of stories about housekeeping. So uh, please remember this session is for AU for feedback. Do provide the feedback so we can improve things moving forward. Uh, please also support the two charities that GSC is sponsoring, which is the RNLI and Guide Dogs for the Blind. And uh, towards the end of the last week, I think we were about 60-70% of target for those charities. And I think uh, one session yesterday crept up quite considerably. So uh, we're well on target, hopefully, to, um, to make a big difference to those charities. Um, and if you want to ask questions, uh, please put them in the chat. Uh, Michael, if you see anything interesting, by all means, uh, stop and answer the questions. But otherwise, we'll take the questions at the end. And then I can unmute people if they need clarification on the question. So it's uh, two minutes past. So without further ado, over to you, Michael, for the session. Uh, OK, let me start my talk here. <laughs> I need to have. OK. So my name is Michal Białecki. Thank you, Colin, for introducing me. I'm working for IBM for over 20 years, and since 15 years, I'm working for db 2 zos lab. Since a few years, since two years, I am on John Campbell's db 2 zos SWOT team, and I will be presenting today about db 2 zos housekeeping best practices that we learned during our studies that we do and that we are advising to our customers. <clears throat> so here's the charity raffle that Colin has mentioned. Please participate. It's actually great that GSC is participating in the, some charity stuff, uh, which is outside of IDE. So I fully support it. So this quote is coming from Cambridge Dictionary. But as an example, it says something about DB2 as well. She has a relaxed, relaxed attitude to housekeeping. So, and we often see this at DB2 sites. I personally think it's easier to clean up your house comparing to DB2 objects and your DB2. So by DB2 zos housekeeping, we normally mean reorg runs that's rebind and free of the packages. And I will start with some overview, then move to, method, to the method, methodology of the reorg and run stats together as they are very tightly coupled. And then I will discuss rebind bind strategy. So why db 2 zos housekeeping is that important? In simple words, the more intact data you have and the better statistics. And the statistics is a metadata that you have for this data. The better access path you may have, the more CPU savings, less get pages, and less dusty is used. And with every select of the inserts, the data that is intact, the data that's already reworked, is processed more efficiently we find rows quicker as those are in the clustering sequence. We avoid concurrency issues due to deadlocks timeouts. We avoid wasted space for the holes that we create after deletes or updates. And similarly with the statistics, with run stats, we know more about our data, how it looks like. So during bind, rebind and prepare, optimizer can choose the best access pos possible to our data. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start with the reorg. Why will we reorg at all? With any DML you run, insert, update, delete, it may disorganize the data. Let me check, someone is posting something in the chat. Okay, that's Colin. Uh, with every DML, we are disorganizing the data. For example, when we have the update in place, if we are updating our values and the data is longer, or it, it doesn't compress that well to fit into our original spot, it may be causing the overflow record and we are creating indirect references. So instead of the value to storing the value in the original place, we put the address of the new entry that is placed somewhere else. Index is still pointing to the original place. So when we access the data through the index to the data, we first go to this address reference and then go to the place where the data is stored 
physically, right? And such thing can continue, and we can actually have a chains of indirect references. So after a while of updates, your quality of the data that you have may degrade. <clears throat> Another example is with delete. So what we do for deletes, uh, we may leave pseudo deleted roles, pages uh, in index and not reclaiming it. This is for performance reasons. We basically mark it as pseudo deleted. So our index may grow regardless that we are doing deletes. So that, that story can con continue in many aspects. The same applies for the mass deletes when we have pseudo deleted pages or the space maps and so on. So the real table space put this data and index back in order according to the clustering, and it also reclaims the space. Uh, that was about real table space and real index only re reorganized the index, leaving table space untouched. Still, it's better to have organized index uh, if that's the only thing that you can afford for because of the timing windows, because of the maintenance windows. Usually the data is accessed through the index, so it's better to have at least reorganized index. <clears throat> Runstats. Runstats gathers information about the data itself. What are the data values? What are the data distribution? What values there are and how often they occur in data? Is there any correlation, etc.? As we are changing our data, in applications with delete updates insert, the information that you gather during the last run stats may no longer reflect data or not fully. And the statistics are becoming obsolete or old. And during bind or prepare, optimizer, which is a cost-based based optimizer, is evaluating the cost of the all possible, let's say, access paths, and is choosing the cheapest one that wins. And if we have non-current statistics, this choice may be not the best one, right? So <clears throat> if the statistics are reflecting the current data that we have, access path is probably the best it can be. Otherwise, it, it will be basically, it may be bad, right? It may turn out it will be good still, but at some point it will flip to the bad one, right? On simple example, if the table is empty or just have a few rows, right? The cheapest access path that we may have is actually a table space scan. However, if we insert rows, let's say 5,000 rows, right? And we don't gather statistics, the table space scan would be a really bad choice. So your query access path is as good as your statistics are or the currency of your statistics. Uh, what is a rebind or bind? In my memory, I imagine the rebind and bind as a kind of compile. So we are having the executable form of SQL, which is stored in either package in the directory catalog, ready to be executed. Or when we do the prepare, which is actually equal to bind of dynamic state SQL, it's basic placing executable form of SQL in dynamic statement cache. So to me, bind is kind of compile, right? We have the <clears throat> executable form ready and waiting to be executed. And now assume that you have version 11 package that you are running on version 12. Of course, it can still be executed as we support up to two versions back, but it doesn't benefit with all bind time enhancements that are coming with the new release. DB2.12 will, of course, tolerate it, but during the runtime, it will expand it. And we call it this process we call puffing, meaning it's adjusting the package to be executed uh, on current release. And it's done every time it's being executed, right? So, and there is a downside of it, right? Because some of the features that we are having in version 12 which are not runtime features, which are bind time features, are disabled, of course, right? The other things that are disabled are fast column processing, which is the Xprox, Sprox. Those are the in-memory structures that we are using in DB2, and we are reusing them when we re-execute the package. So 
<clears throat> rebind refreshes all package runtime structures. Of course, it may choose also another access path. But if you rebind on the current release, it takes all version 12 enhancements on board along with your, let's say, current maintenance level, right? And speaking about maintenance, rebind is often required when you apply a PTF. It's listed as a hold action, uh, for example, to avoid some defects described by part particular APAR. So if you don't rebind and ignore hold action, you can still face some incorrect outputs or abends, right? And actually, this is a common very problem, right? That in our support in client success, customer opens a case describing the problem and it matches the APAR they already have applied, but the hold action was not followed. So the package execution is still bad. It still executes the same bad way. So rebind is really important as well to pick up maintenance changes and release enhancements. So in this part, I will be speaking about the methodology for the rework and run stats together are, because they are very, very tightly coupled. Basically, you should execute them together, let's say, right, <clears throat> in general. Uh, so how do we decide if an object requires a rework or run stats? Some objects that we have are static, they don't change much, and some that are very volatile. And since few versions of DB2 already, there is, let's say, catalog table. First, it wasn't catalog table, but now it's catalog table, which is called the real time statistics, which is built in DB2. And with every insert, update, delete, those tables are updated with the statistics that we are doing. Like, for example, how many get pages we're doing, right? Or how many inserts we did, how many updates, deletes. So we can decide and set a rule. Let's say, for example, after 50% of changes, after 50% of updates, I need to reorg my table. So in RTS, there are many, many, many more indicators. You can look at including must deletes, indirect references, pseudo deleted rows, etc. So RTS is really val very valuable, and you should rely on this to trigger reorgs for in your installation. With Runstat, it's similar, and uh, there are also use counts for inserts, update leads, and they may be used as a threshold for triggering Runstat. And I will repeat it here in this presentation probably 10 times that you never ever should run the Runstat outside of the reorg. And I will explain it later why. Uh, speaking about Runstat, we, since version 11, we also have additional indicators to say or to guide you, to suggest you what run stats option shall be used. If our statistics are good enough for optimizer to take decision on access path or if they need some fine tuning. And this mechanism is called sysstat feedback. It populates another catalog table, which is sysstat feedback during every bind rebind prepare. And additionally in version 11, we are, we may be automatically creating the uh, profiles that are used in the run stats. So those profiles can be used automatically to run stats or as in line with reorg or log. I will explain in more detail later. So for system feedback, here's an example of what types of indicators we may have. For example, here's the flag. Let me, my laser pointer, here's the flag conflict, right? It may indicate, it can happen when we have conflicting statistics. This often happens when we are running the run stats of the index or in the partition in different point in time than the run stats on the table. And one of them basically is wrong, wrong, well, there are conflicts, basically one says, I have, for example, 20 values, and one says I have 10 values, right? So this is a conflict, and you know, optimizer may be confused which one to take, right? So this is not a good situation, right? So system feedback may help you to see if you are exposed to these problems, right? 
In version 12, we also have additionally, as I mentioned, the profiles. And the profiles are automatically populated if you turn them on in the zip arms. And what it does is basically based on the systat feedback, it generates the syntax for your run stats. And this run stats can use the profile to plug it in, right? So basically, if you just run the run stats, use profile, it will take the profile out of this table and it will run it for you. So actually, I was happy to see this enhancement in version 11, and I was really thrilled to see it in version 12. I thought it will solve all the access problems in the world. It didn't. Adoption rate of this feature is quite low. And it's not because it's, uh, you know, this feature is actually working fine, but there is a fear about access path changes, about access path regression. So the people are not enabling it because they think that the access path that they have is good enough, right? And basically it may worse. So basically you need to be careful what you run. The system feedback may help you, but I would say it's kind of the soft advice that we are giving. So unless you know what you're doing, you never should plug them in just without testing, without knowing that it will not worsen your access path. Okay, anyway, so how do we generate the object candidates for your grant stats? So we have our real time statistics and we have system feedback. So you can decide yourself what to run, right? Based on the, those tables. However, I would say this three is state of art to choose and, and maybe a time consuming process. And DB2 provides you a stored procedure, DSN ACCOX, and along with the formulas that you can use. And basically, it will help you to choose the candidates. Actually, DSN ACCOX is not the most convenient, uh, the most user friendly stored procedure. So, in most of the client installations that I am seeing, customers are using it or they are using the formulas taken from the SNA CCOX. Again, no matter what you use to generate uh, their, for example, run stats, you should have a backup plan so no access path regression happens, right? So why should we be using the SNA COX or why should we be using the formulas that are in the SNA COX? First of all, it's built in DB2 product. There are so many fields to decide that really use of those may be, may be quite challenging. DS and ACOX is also updated with every release or also rarely with APARs in the maintenance stream in DB2 release. So you want to pick up those enhancements when you are selecting your objects. Again, it doesn't mean that you have to use this sort of procedure but basically it's recommended to use documented formulas and those formulas are documented in this link. So using those formulas, you should evaluate for every leg how many recommendations are given, what objects are, let's say, highly occurring and so on, right? So you can build some automation here. You can be, build some scoring tables for your objects. You can see how many objects are generated and why, right? And you can also take some additional measures to limit the numbers of subjects. Okay, so let's go to those formulas. Documented looks, documented formula look, looks like this. It's quite complex, no? This is the SQL query which has many parameters and customers are coming to us and saying, you know, how should I set it, right? So the defaults that we are documenting in Knowledge Center are usually good enough. Some of them are still, let's say, we are in process of correcting them. So I'm listing here the most important ones that you should be taking into account. And if, if basically you take them as is, you will be okay, right? So, for example, delete percentage, right? The default in Knowledge Center is 25, and it's kind of reasonable, right? approach, right? If you delete more than 
then you probably should reorg, right? If for the next one, this is very important, unclustered inserts. So unclustered inserts, there are actually two, two things here. One of them is indicator reorg cluster sensitivity and reorg are clustered inserts. So those are two flags. So basically this is really important to have the data in the clustering order. So this 10 here means that more than 10% of my data is unclustered. So in this case, I should be reorging my table space. The next one is indirect references. This is about the overflow records that I was talking about. And is basically indicating that more than 5% of the indirect references of the overflow records, I should be looking into reorging my table space. For the index space, it is similar. Sometimes it's enough to reorg index to get better performance. Uh, and here on example of the recommendations of the, of the values that we should be using is for example, the indicator for the pseudo deleted index and index entries. So <clears throat> when we do the, Delete, as I mentioned, we don't delete physically the data. We just mark it as deleted. It does not remove anything from the index itself. It basically marks a flag saying, this row is deleted. So when we are accessing the data through the index, this data still exists and it still has to be read. Basically, it is read and says, okay, it's not valid. Okay, I skip it then and I go to another one. But there is an IO right, related to the pseudo deleted entries. So if there is more than 5% of pseudo deleted entries, that's indicator to uh, reorganize the index. Of course, you may already heard about this and I will be talking about this, that for the pseudo deleted index entries, we have also the enhancements. We have the demons, system agent tasks that are doing this under the covers. But sometimes it's not enough. And I will be talking about this. In a, in a second. Uh, okay, another indicator is about the <clears throat> index page splits. Uh, basically, the index page splits is done when all the entries in the leaf page are used during the insert. Then DB2 allocates a new page and moves some entries from the old page to the new page. Historically, DB2 has split index pages by moving 50-50. So all the entries, all the entries were split into half and half of the entries were moved to the new, uh, new page just to balance the index tree. However, according to this logic, when there is sequential values inserted to the index in order, then the free space in the old index page, this 50%, was never used. So basically we were allocating new leaf page, moving half of the pages, half of the rows to the new one and not reusing the old one because we always have the growing values, for example, right? Starting from version nine, we detect such scenario and we split it more intelligently, let's say asymmetrically, let's say 20, 80, right? But it's never ideal. So the reorg index would be recommended to reclaim the storage and rebalance the index B3. Another important example is number of index levels that has changed since the last reorg. On example, if you have four level index and it has degraded to five levels, that means whenever you get to the data through the index, you need to walk four, uh, uh, four non-leaf pages one leaf page, and of course the, uh, the IO to, the, to get to the data, right? So, so you need to have five IOs, right? If you reduce the level to four, then you have one IO less. So you saved about 25% on every index access. So this indicator is quite important, I would say, because you get instant savings. Another way to uh, get this instant savings about reducing numbers of index levels 
is basically trying to increase the index page size to reduce the levels. However, this needs also to be backed up with, with buffer pool increase, right? Because you will be getting bigger pages, right? Another one is about the pseudo empty pages. This is similar to pseudo deleted index entries. So you need to remove them. And more than 5% of pseudo empty pages is a good indicator for the reorg index. OK, is there any questions so far? I see some question in the chat. Yeah, there's one from Paul. From Paul. Yeah. With respect of rebind, uh, SPROX, how does Apple Compat affect this? So for the SPROX, we, let's say, don't care. Uh, Apple Compat has no, let's say, no downside on the SPROX. So once you rebind the package on the version 12, no matter what function level you are in, the SPROX will still be used. So there is no penalty. I hope that I answered your, your question, Paul. I just noticed it's very late, so sorry. Is that OK, Paul? Or do you want me to unmute you for that clarification? Oh, that's OK. Good. Thanks, Paul. OK. okay. We're good. Thank you, Paul. That was a good question. And I will be talking about this as well on the next slides. So yeah. OK, next slide is about index cleanup of pseudo deleted entries. I just want to mention it uh, because it's quite important to, to understand how it works. So with the ZParm index cleanup threads, the default is 10. Uh, we basically, under the covers of DB, DB2, we are doing the cleanup for the indexes. We are deleting index entries that are pseudo deleted. And you can control it, not only in terms of the how many agents you do, but you can control it on the object level, the day of week and time when it's being done for an object. For example, you don't want uh, the cleanup to happen during the week, only on the weekends, right? Or you want to exclude some heavily accessed table, right? The caveat is that this think only cleans up the touched get pages. I mean the touched data, right? Processing. And if you enable it just for example on the weekends, it may be limited, right? So bear in mind if you limit it somehow, let's say to weekends only, you may not be getting what you are wanting to, right? So it potentially has the uh, it potentially can improve the need for the reorg index. I mean, reorg index is maybe no longer needed because all the RTS entries that we are, that I was talking about, the, about the pseudo entries will be removed, right? When you clean up the, uh, the pseudo empty uh, index rows, right? So this feature can buy you a lot, right? It can buy you a lot and you can observe actually uh, how it's processing and what indexes are being touched using this IFC ID 377. It tracks the cleanup at the index page level. So some customs that we are seeing in our studies, actually we are surprised to see that they're not running so many reorgs and they still have a very good indicators instant in, in the RTS. So that actually means that this cleanup processing worked for them very well. Okay, this is the formula for the ESN ACOX for the run stats. I probably should not be even mentioned here, I would say, uh, because we are not recommending it. We are not totally recommending running the run stats outside of reorg. I'm just putting this for completeness, but as the result of the studies, we are seeing when the customers are running the run stats outside of the reorg and it's causing some issues. It's causing the time difference time drift, data drift, there is no island of stability. Uh, basically, it, if the run stats is being run on disorganized data that is already degraded, we do have actual statistics, but there is no stability point. 
For example, imagine that you have loaded the data to the table and then you have inserted, let's say, thousands of inserts or millions of inserts, and then you have run started it. And you bind the package and life is good in terms of you are, you are satisfied with the access path, right? But now imagine that you would like to come back to the situation, right? That you would like to repeat the same, let's say, point in time run start. That may not be possible unless you repeat the same scenario. You reorg or load, you insert those thousand rows, right? And then you run start. So basically it's kind of hard, right? That's why we are not advising it. And you know, having statistics on, on disorganized data is probably not, not the best idea, right? Sometimes we are seeing that the run stats is being run as a way to check if the reorg is needed. And that was the way that was pre-RTS time. Uh, when we didn't have RTS, that was the way to, to, to check if we need the reorg, right? Nowadays with, with RTS, such legacy run stats are no longer needed. Just remove it if you have such. Okay, so we have uh, basically we have the list of the object candidates and what we do with them. Basically, you should review them. Those formulas may gener generate a lot of object candidates for reorg, and not all of them may actually fit into your maintenance window. So, how to evaluate it? How to, do we know what you can afford for to run? You need to build a scoring table against each rule. Each predicate that I have listed on the previous slide for reorg should be basically in the scoring table. And you should be choosing the top ones that you can run in particular window, for example, the ones that are mostly degraded. If there are any leftovers, those basically need some additional window or priority with the next window. Uh, you also can avoid reorgs if you perform the trend analysis on those rules. On example, if there are index page splits, you may consider increasing percent free to reserve more data in the page, right? So having the scoring table can also trigger not only the reorgs, but can trigger the changes in DL that you can make to avoid the reorgs. So if, for example, you have the updates that are causing overflow records, then you probably should define percent free for update. So, or increase sex size, for example, to fit more clustered data, increase page size of the indexes. So you have less levels, right? And so on, right? So those rules that you are storing and those rules that you are performing the trend analysis may trigger also DDL changes that will allow you to avoid the frequent reorgs. Another way to review the list of the, well, another hint, I would say, uh, for the list of the objects, we often see that, for example, customer has 200 partitions and for 150 reorg is advised, right? And they are running those <clears throat> 150 reorgs on the partition level. So in this case, it's recommended rather to escalate to a table space level reorg, right? So you can also build the logic instead of reorging every single partition of the, of the table when the objects are, most of the objects that, that are selected, you basically reorg the whole table. It simplifies the reorg and also handling of the NPI, right? During reorgs. And at the same time, the run stats is easier to calculate the aggregation of statistics, right? Uh, okay. So now we have our list and what we do next. For the real table space and index, we should merge that list. And first we run real table space along with run stats for example, inline statistics. 
I mentioned here if we have the list of the re -org table space and indexes. That means that the index that is defined on the same table space, we basically merge it. And instead of running separately re -org table space and index, we basically run the re -org table space with statistics. If there is any re -org index objects on the list, then of course you should run re -org index, but don't run run stats with it. As I explained earlier, it will create the time drift between the table and index statistics. So in general, don't run reorg table space without run stats and run stats without reorg table space. Okay. If you having if you are using the <clears throat> DS and ACOX, DS and ACOX already is including the advisory or pending or advisory reveal pending statuses in the list of the objects. But if you are just using the formulas taken from the US Nacox, you also should remember about this. Uh, so basically also put in the list of the objects, the ones that are in the pending statuses. Okay, and here are some general recommendations for reorg syntax. First, reorg can be disruptive. And we are seeing this very often that this utility can cause transaction to fail due to the timeout if it's run outside of the timing, uh, let's say maintenance windows. And this particular happens when the sum of max RO and drain weight, which is the timeout for the, for the reorg is less than, than our application timeout, which is ILM resource weight timeout minus five seconds. So basically, you should check if, of course, you would like to avoid transaction timeouts during reorg. You should check if you are following this rule. Otherwise, you may be seeing timeouts on your transactions, right? Instead of timeouts on in reorg. Um, it's actually better to timeout on the reorg, right? Of course, during the online day than time out someone who is waiting for payment, right? Uh, another issue may be when the object is very large, right? Which is the new norm in our world. And we can't, can't fit it into the uh, maintenance window. How do we, do we uh, reorg such an object? So outside of maintenance window, you can reorg with max RO defer shell level change, which will make the reorg and wait till you alter to max RO, let's say five in the reorg maintenance window, allowing switch phase to happen. So we all do the work, do all the work during the, let's say, online period, and we just do the switch when we can, right? Of course, you can try to use the force all option to force the reorg through. But of course, then there will be transaction failures, right? Uh, another recommendation about the syntax is for lock node objects, always create two image copies along with reorg and write one to DASD and one to the tape. And wh wh why I'm saying this, why two copies, right? This is because in some uh, cases, when there is a truly DR event. You know, if you store everything just on the VTS or on the tape, the latency because between the VTSs from the primary site and the disaster recovery site can be long, right? Let's say 10 minutes, right? And you may be just in this time doing the reorg and, you know, writing image copy just to the VTS, right? And then you wake up on the DR site actually without the copy, right? So if you write it to the DASD and to VTS, this will allow you the free write because the DASD is mirrored, right? So always take two copies, one to DASD, one to VTS, just for disaster recovery purposes. Another option to use is about drain all. Uh, don't use drain write writers because it's also common misunderstanding Drain writers is basically draining twice. It drains first the writers and then drains the readers, right? So 
drain all, basically does it all in the one, one time, right? So you save the time. You can consider using option drain, all parts yes. Basically, we are draining all the partitions at the same time. So you can avoid kind of logical timeouts or deadlocks between the claims and drains when you're running rework on the partitions level. Another zparm, which is not related well to the syntax, is but it's related to the reorg, is reorg drop PVG parts. It should be set to disabled, which is actual default. Otherwise, if partition is dropped, you can't recover such partition to point in time prior to the reorg. So this is important, and we do see this in the customers that are setting to enable, and they are not aware that if the partition is dropped, they cannot recover. They are not recover recoverable to the point in time prior to the reorg. Okay, about run stats. <clears throat> uh, cost of runstat itself is not that trivial. First of all, because we are putting into DB2 so many enhancements to offload everything to zips. So most of the runstat processing is very cheap, right? However, the cost is coming when we would like to do the bind or prepare or explain. Because if we have many rows to read from the catalog and many access path choices, that may take a while for optimizer to decide which one to choose. And I recall a case from my, let's say, previous life in DB2 support, when we had the customer who reported that the thread has hang. There was a hang for the thread because it was processing the explain for like 20 minutes, right? And it turned out it wasn't a hang. It was basically normal processing by optimizer, but optimizer has to consume so many rows that it was just basically taking that long. So, and we often see that DBAs are over collecting statistics and burning CPU, not exactly during the run stats, but late in the related processing. So the first recommendation is don't use free call by default. So don't specify it in the run stats unless it's recommended, for example, in system feedback or by our support, right? There is also common, common misunderstanding about the free file num calls. And this num calls, if it's greater than one, is often not very useful. And this is common misunderstanding how it works. So let's say that we have the Ransat index free file num calls three. I had the customer like three years ago who said, I have num calls three because it's covering all the columns. Column one, combination of column one and two, combination of column one, two, and three. No, it's not. It is covering only the frequency of occurrences of column one, two, and three together. So it will know nothing about column one frequency. It will know nothing about column one and two together. Another thing is that uh, those statistics are only used with the equal predicates with literals. So we, if you have to use it, probably free file one would be the best one because it's just on the leading index. But anything more is maybe not, not that useful unless you know what you're doing because it may be the valid case that you know your queries, that you know your SQL and you are using equal predicates with literals, let's say on five columns, right? Always. Then this would be a good choice, right? Otherwise it wouldn't be. It would generate lots of statistics that are not used or that will be actually skipped during optimization, but still will be read, right? So the work by DB2 still needs to be done. Here are more recommendations that don't use frequent both or least. If you have to use frequent, use the most. Uh, the least uh, actually also disables the table sample. So don't use histograms by default. Histograms are great because they have the distribution of, of how our data looks like. The problem is they can become very quickly stale if you have the, for example, the, the ranges of the dates or times, then we, the timestamp, they will become becoming stale. So you will be, let's say, if you would like to keep histograms, you need to be very current on your statistics. 
otherwise they won't be used. And the danger is if the histogram statistics are not covering the data, and if you get the query that is referring to the range not covered by histogram statistics, then optimizer thinks there is no data. So basically we may choose bad access path, right? If we don't run them frequently enough, right? And who can afford to run run stats like every day or a few times a day? Probably no one, right? <clears throat> so about run stat syntax, I would like also to mention that in version 12, we introduced the change default in validate cache none, in validate cache no is a change default. So running run stats will not purge dynamic statement cache. This is done for the performance reasons. Basically, we would like to avoid the tsunami of prepares when you have to do the run stats for some other reasons. Let's say that you have to correct some access path and do the bind on the package. At the same time, if you do the run stats, it will purge the dynamic statement cache. So we improved it and we, by default, don't do this, right? Of course, if you would like to purge the dynamic statement cache, you still can use the old techniques, right? Like use the invalidate cache yes, or report no, update no, reset access path and so on, right? Okay, let's go now to the system feedback and run stats. I'm running a little bit out of time. So few considerations about system feedback. Um, this feature generates recommendations for run stats when we should run it. Uh, however, if you enable this feature prior to function level 507, all existing statistics that you have will be merged into the profile that you will be start using. So what does it mean? It means that if you ever, let's say five years ago, has collected histogram statistics, and now you are starting to use the profiles, those histogram statistics recommend well syntax will be incorporated into the profile so is it a danger yeah it is it's huge danger so basically you should stop here and you should think what what you should do in this case so prior to function level 507 what you should do is remove any obsolete statistics before they get into the profiles and at the end of my presentation i have listed the appendix uh, for such a query in function level 507 or higher all non-profile statistics are automatically removed. What a relief. However, if you ever use profiles, even outside of system feedback, or if you let system feedback generate the profile, it still will be merged into the new profile. So basically, be careful about this. Bear in mind that if you will be starting to use it, you need to get rid of the uh, all statistics. So here's the recommendation. I won't, I won't read it because we are a little bit late. I am a little bit late. So <clears throat> there are cases when reorg and Russell is not needed. That's for the cases where we have the state tables, journal tables, rarely read or used only for analog processing. Uh, of course, Runstat may not be necessary for volatile tables uh, because Basically, the data is volatile, right? So you may be running one run stat for some sample values and then leave it as is, right? Uh, also, the NPG threshold will, let's say, help you in this situation. If you have default statistics, it will trigger uh, the index access for the tables that has fewer data than the NPG threshold, right? For the log table spaces, we don't need statistics, it's not used. Uh, there are also customers who has rebind never strategy. Why we should collect anything if you never rebind? Uh, basically, this this should be crossed out. It's never ever you should never say that I have rebind never strategy because at some point you will be forced to the rebind. The same applies for the dynamic plan stability and uh, also dynamic queries. Right. Basically, if you have dynamic plan stability, then you're Query is captured into the catalog dynamic queries and can be reloaded, right? So someone may say, okay, I have dynamic stability. I'm happy with the, how it uh, runs. I don't need the run stats, right? But at some point, this 
plan that was stabilized will be decided, will be invalidated, and then you will have to rebound. You will have to reprepare. So there are cases when you think transfers may not be needed, but you know Murphy is listening, right? And you may be forced to rebind in the least convenient time for you. Okay, so here's the cheat sheet that I would like to keep for yourself as the reference. The important part is reorg table say index together with run stats if they are on the same object. If there are indexes, just reorg separately without run stats, please. Okay, I see some questions in the chat. Also from Paul. Um, oh yeah, Paul, I think that your question is very valid. I have the customers who has 90, 900 partitions, but they will, will be changed soon to 4,000 parts. I don't want to put in uh, now the drain parts all. Yeah, that's probably the reasonable, reasonable value, right? I mean, that's reasonable, right? Not to use the drain all parts, right? If you have 4,000 partitions, yeah, the drain, drain all parts will basically disturb you more than than help, right? That's right. V very valid point. Well, thank you. Uh, okay, remind. Uh, Okay, we use the statistics during the rebind or prepare, right? So I often get the questions from the customers, I don't rebind, I don't need statistics, right? But I mentioned earlier, you may be forced to rebind due to the defect that you just applied the PDF or due to the halt action, right? There will be some application program change code, uh, change code uh, changes, and you will have to create new package or modified package, right? There will be cases when you alter DDL of the table, let's say you add a column or remove a column, right? And it will invalidate the package and will, it will cause auto bind, right? Earlier, it was prior to APAR PH15896. This was quite dangerous because it was picking up the, I would say, random access path, right? at the time when we do the auto bind, right? Which you never know, right? Now, access path regression probability is quite low because with this APAR, it will basically use the APU reuse warn and APU reuse source current. So if you try to reuse the, the current access path for the auto bind. Okay. Uh, so what's the deal with rebind? And I always talk about the fear of intro intro introducing regression, worse access path than we have so far, right? So customers have thousands of packages and they are accounted as all we are, not for the good results, for, but for the unexpected behavior after rebind. So, and there is full spectrum of how customers are using rebind. Some customers are rebinding every, after every maintenance window, hold the world of packages. Some customers may have a rebind never strategy. So what is your position, right? How and what are you doing to regret, to address the regression? So good statistics and being reasonably current in maintenance can reduce that risk. Uh, on example, the risk of access path change when you are forced to rebind version 10 package on version 12 is much higher than rebind package with a current release. Also, DB2 provides you a mechanism to reduce introduction of new access path. And those are the plan management, AP reuse, AP compare, switch to previous original. If something happens, you can explain, rebind with explain only. So you can see what, what is the planned uh, access path, right? You can explain package to see what is the current plan, access plan. Also, dynamic plan stability can help you with this for the dynamic queries. So, you know, we can stabilize your dynamic queries and you can just load them when you restart DB2, right? Okay, so how often to rebind? So at least once after migration to gain performance benefits of the new release. All optimizer uh, enhancements are actually coming 
uh, all optimizer enhancements are actually coming in M100 already. So one rebind is enough. <clears throat> and this is also addressing the poll uh, question about function levels, right? So you don't need to rebind every function level. It does not buy you anything uh, yet, right? I haven't seen in function levels yet optimizer enhancements let's say bind time optimizer enhancement. So you won't benefit here, right? If you are very conservative, you can use AP reuse. It will help you to reuse the access path that you are already satisfied with. And if you want to be protected, right? Or warned if the access path, access path changes, right? Uh, of course, you won't benefit from the new access paths, right? Okay, minimum recommendation, as I mentioned, once per release, there is no requirement for the function level rebinds. And those are the uh, recommendations after maintenance applications, right? When you apply the maintenance, you may be forced to do the rebind. So conservative approach is to do it with AP reuse. However, if you are not satisfied with the current access path of package, of you of or if you are trying to get the better better access path, you can rebind without a periods, right? And then have a backup if if it, if it fails, right? Maybe switch to original or switch to uh, previous, right? After reorg with run stats, uh, basically it's not required unless performance is acceptable, right? Uh, it can be done based on the your ability to address regressions, right? So you need you can do this having in mind that you have a backup plan. So you can fall back with rebind switch. You can maybe uh, have some target run stuff to run or other two D tuning approaches, like for example, opt hints to force the access path to get back to the previous one that you were satisfied with, right? That's about rebind phase in. I won't mention about here because probably you know about this. Function level 505 uh, is basically uh, is the pain with the rebind itself, how it takes duration and uh, how it collides with, with current work. Uh, cleanup of packages, uh, basically for the space constraints in the SPT01, you can use the last use column in this package to identify the packages that have not been used for a very long time. And be careful here because very long time varies, right? In some installations, some packages are running once per year, right? Maybe once per three years, right? Depending on the business, right? So first, before freeing them, talk to your application developers, talk if you can afford for it. Uh, in version 12, we are having some enhancements, how do we free, how we can free, we can invalidate, we can, free only invalid only to remove inactive invalid packages, or we can free just the originals and previous that are, for example, obsolete coming from version nine, right? Or from version 10, right? That's for sure obsolete, right? Okay, in the summary, uh, housekeeping is important as it may generate for you instant CPU cost savings. But you need to be prepared for unexpected rebind or dynamic query prepare by having current and not over collected statistic information. And as always, John is saying, safety first. Always have a copy of your access path and compare before the you rebind. So no access, access path degradation is introduced. You can introduce, you can utilize DB2 features to, to have it, or you can preserve backup of your statistics for the critical access paths. Um, okay, I think this is the end of my presentation. Here's the query that is coming from Terry Purcell. Thank you, Terry, for this. Uh, basically, you can identify the state statistics and you can delete them from your catalog before you utilize the system feedback. So I think that's all. If you have any questions, I don't think that we have time, but I think there's just one question from Paul. Um, Paul, if you don't mind, I'll stick you on mute so you can ask that quick question, if you, if you will. 
Thanks, Colin. Yeah, it was just about um, running run stats in the real table space. So we we use DSN ACOX type queries to identify what needs to be reorged. Uh, but we've got some tables with MPIs and DIPSIs and um, our procedures will identify a partition to reorg. So if we do uh, run stats in that reorg, what are your recommendations to uh, cope with DIPSIs and uh, uh, MPIs? Yeah, with MPIs in DIPSIs is always a hard topic because there is no no such thing like uh, reorging just a part, right? Yeah. So always, you know, the claim is taken for the, all the index, right? From the other side, I know that some customers cannot afford to reorg the big tables, right? And reorg re 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 MPIs, right? So, well, <laughs> when I was a customer, uh, we did reorg MPIs and we did reorg uh, huge tables and we, we basically had to find a slot, right, for reorging the whole. So, I don't know if yeah, that's a good question. I'm just thinking about the run stats. So, if we ah. run stats at a partition level, um, and you've said don't uh, run run stats in the reorg index, how do we cope with MPIs and DIPSIs? Okay, so you mean if you have to run the reorg on the part, uh, run stats on the partition level, right? That's what you mean. Yeah, if we, if we collect inline stats when we reorg a partition, um, is there anything we need to do because the, the run stats on the MPRs and DIPSIs might be stale? Yeah, it may be stale and it may be actually as, as well, it may be wrong, right? Yeah. I have seen the cases when, uh, when one customer had, after running the run stats on a few partitions, the statistics were showing that we have 100 months in a year, right? <laughs> yeah, because they run it separately and we aggregated them, right, at the end. So, uh, honestly speaking, I don't have any good solution other than running the runs on the whole, right? On the whole table. Okay, okay thank you. It's, it's not ideal, <laughs> but yeah. Right, thanks very much, Michael. That's some really great nuggets of information in there um and just for information you've got the most attendees to any db2 session so far at GSC, so that's one oh. accolade for you <laughs> wow um thank you thank you for attending all of, of you yeah afternoon. thanks very much yes. please everyone do provide feedback for the session uh you should be able to find the link on your agenda and also don't forget those charities if you can contribute that's really wonderful um, and that's all the DB2 sessions for today. We'll start again tomorrow morning. Well, there's plenty of other stuff going on this afternoon, um, including a lunch and learn, I think, which is coming up. So, um, yes, thanks very much, everyone, for attending and um, get those feedbacks in and catch you at another session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.